the Green Man roundabout, it really does feel like a place where journeys should start. Of course, it features in a couple of films by one of my favourite filmmakers, Leighton Stone's Ian Bourne. And uh, a line from his film, Lenny's documentary, will kind of provide the theme for today's walk. So, in Lenny's documentary, Ian, or basically a character Ian uh, plays, says the line, um, people around here crack up and then they get sent to Claybury. And he's referring to the Claybury Psychiatric Hospital, Victorian Psychiatric Hospital, which is out here near Woodford Bridge, Chigwell. And I'm going to walk out there today. There's a park and a wood there. It's a walk I first did 10 years ago, almost to the day. So I'm repeating that old war. I've not done it since. This is the Leighton Stone, if you like. Leighton Stone meaning the uh, Leighton at the Stone. And what we today called Leighton for many years was known as Low Leighton. So it was all really Leighton, it was just divided into two halves, Leighton at the Stone and Low Leighton. And this is a stone, which was like a milestone, a marker stone. Some people believe the base is the original Roman milestone. Although it's more likely to be a you know, 17th, 18th century. Of course, there was at least one Roman road that passed through Leightonstone out into Essex. Um, I don't know if you remember, I made a video a while ago where I walked along a bit of Roman road near sort of Epping, Thaden Boys, at Hobbs Cross. That road passes uh, through Leightonstone. They probably went over Wanstead Flats. And uh, of course, we've now passed into Redbridge from Waltham Forest. And we're now in Wanstead. It's very sad. Another pub bites the dust. The British Queen. I never actually went in there, but people told me they did an amazing steak. I'll never know now. Wanstead. One. Stead. Literally, some people will interpret that as an Anglo-Saxon name, the White Place or the White House. That's one reading of it. I prefer Wodenstead. Look at that, Wodenstead. Like a mound or some sort of temple or monument that was here for the worship of Woden. I mean, it could be both. Who knows? Something really quite bucolic about this little corner of Wanstead, around the parish church here. I did see a statistic years ago that said that Wanstead has the uh, oldest population in London. And I think that's to do with the concentration of uh, care homes here. Whether that's still the case or not, I don't know. I do have a really deep affection for Wanstead. And the Weatherspoons here, the George, on the end of the High Street, that is, uh, it's a great place to learn about the history of Wanstead Park, <laughs> actually. There are some lovely uh, old paintings of Wanstead Park in there, and some information on the walls. It's a really beautiful old building, isn't it? So it looks like it was a, a garage, an MOT garage. And it's a sign of it says, some IPE boutique living, so it's going to be changed into I don't know, flats or something. So this is where we're heading today, down there, Claybury Hospital. This is an old map I just bought in the Oxfam of, uh, of Chigwell, which was the, I suppose the old urban district of Chigwell. Herman Hill. It's got its very own distinctive feel to it, Herman here, I think. It's got a, got a real character. Can't quite boil it down, but I think these buildings here personify it for me. I 
it's a really beautiful building. So it's a, it was an orphanage built for the children of merchant seamen and it was opened in the, I think it was 1861, 1862. I believe it was opened by uh, Prince Albert. See up there, it says, Albert, Prince Consort. So the orphans of British merchant seamen. I read that it was built to a really high spec with very kind of high ceilings that allowed lots of air to pass through it. So it was uh, very light, full of light, so it kind of gets away from the idea of Victorian buildings being sort of dark and unpleasant. We're dropping down now off the high ground with the orphanage sitting up on the hill. We're going to drop down into the Roding Valley and then up again to Claybury. Navigation when you're in this kind of suburban swamp is just as vital as when you're in the forest because you go wrong and you end up walking around these streets for hours and hours and hours trapped in sort of cul-de-sacs and one-way systems. Somewhere here there's a little uh, path that should lead through to the Roding Valley. I think it's somewhere near that pylon. Boom. The way across. All hail the pylon. It's dedication to the craft that is to do that. Now look at this. This is propped up beneath the uh, North Circular here. Highway sites, grass cuttings, 2017-2018. Inside. The list of uh, roads in Hainault, Hainault housing, Loxford, so this is Redbridge obviously. Oh, well, that's around about grass cut. That's brilliant, isn't it? Wow. I'll leave that there. I love walking under <laughs> really busy roads, and the North Circular is there throbbing away above my head. Quite peaceful down. Ah, the glorious river roading. They've made a video of the walk along here. I've made two videos walking along the roading at different times of the year, but you know what? I still haven't walked out to the source, so I've still got to do that, haven't I? This is an interesting place. It's the pet cemetery. What a really wonderful place. Yeah, this is classic Edgelands. The river, the uh, power infrastructure, the electricity generators, the cemetery, the industrial units. I love it. And of course, seagulls circling and squawking overhead. They're a long way from the sea, aren't they? Must mean there's like a rubbish tip or something over there. And we've got a great bit of subway action here to get us under the dual carriageway and out to a Toby Carvery. Redbridge has got a really good selection of uh, subways and underpasses. I suppose it's because of the Eastern Avenue and the North Circular Road uh, and the M11, I guess, at some point. So it does throw up these wonderful uh, underpasses that don't stink of urine. Let me point that out, make that very clear. Actually, this one does smell a bit of urine. I wouldn't say it stinks of it, it just has a kind of hint of urine. But I've tried to clean it, so to get marks for that. A Toby Carvery. 
What an amazing thing to see. We only find these around the edges of London. Toby Carvery. And it is almost like a religious experience coming up on that. Home of the roast. Oh, and I am a bit peckish. We also really like the way they number the footpaths in Redbridge. I don't know why. There's something sort of uh, very efficient about that. Look, a great bit of. Uh, We think of Patrick Keeler's film, Robinson in Ruins. Some classic outer London suburbia. And at the end of the street there, you see that dense wooded hill. That's where we're heading. Now this is a journey that would have been made by the, uh, the great East End mystic, David Rudinsky celebrated in Rachel Lichtenstein in Ian Sinclair's book Rudinsky's Rooms, or Hermit of the Princess Street Mosque, who just vanished. And his sister was incarcerated at the asylum at Claybury. And Rudinsky used to walk out there to go and visit her, and he's got that famous annotated A to Z that he created. I believe Ian Sinclair writes in London Orbital that uh, Rudinsky is said to have died himself at Claybury. Very sad. Let me take a slight detour now on this road because I want to check out the uh, Crooked Hat Plantation and this over here, the Egg Clump. I mean, they just look too good to miss out. And also, that's, they could be examples of what I was talking about earlier, of these little pockets of the forest sort of left behind amongst the, uh, the suburban sprawl that kind of ate away the forest. Man, weaving around these streets. This is proper suburban safari. I think the Crooked Hat Plantation is just the other side of this, uh, this block of flats here. Heathcote Avenue. And here we go. The Crooked Hat Plantation. And you can just see the tower of the Clabry Asylum poking above the trees there. And this is a, a remnant of uh, the Hainault Forest, I think. Well, Hainault Forest, Epping Forest, the Great Forest of Essex. This is a little slither that's been sort of chopped off amongst the development. And the great numbered footpaths, footpath 76. So I'm hoping somewhere amongst these kind of cul-de-sacs and uh, little roads here that there's a way up onto Claybury Hill. I think there must be. I've just got to find it, otherwise I've got to go on quite a long way around to get there. Yep, so here we are. Just on the corner of Ravensbourne Gardens, footpath number 74. I didn't mention before, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's bloody hot today. <laughs> it's about 26 degrees, which is really beautiful and delightful. And I would never complain about it being too hot because the other 10 months of the year, it's horrible. Today, it's gorgeous. You are here. The hospital is the main draw for me. You can see here Claybury, Claybury Hall, which I think predates the building of the infirmary, the water tower. Glorious, cool shade of the trees. Man, I need that today. When I came here 10 years ago, it had been raining a lot, and this was like a mudslide. <laughs> it was really hard, and I just had like trainers on. And uh, it was so difficult to walk through. I was slipping and sliding all over the place. Very steep. So it's great today, it's very dry, very hot and dry. And once again, this is a surviving remnant of the great forest of Essex. So 
amazing views looking south east from here it's quite difficult to find a way in to Claybury. I think it's now called Repton Park and of course now it's a development of luxury apartments there's this high fence in the woods around the grounds which probably would have been there when it was a psychiatric hospital it's interesting isn't it that once they had high fences to uh, keep people in to keep the uh, psychiatric patients in and now they have the high fences around it to keep people out by the way people inside are still trapped behind a fence just now they're paying for the privilege there's an old broken fence here the gates open the old gate and i think up here we'll get a view of the uh, water tower Hospital. Here we go. Hunt through the trees. And now we can <laughs> we can see some of the old buildings part of Claybury Hospital. You can see the date there at the top. 1891. So it's a late Victorian asylum. Asylums were really big business in uh, Victorian London. So around the outskirts of London, there's a number of large asylums, Victorian asylums. I think this is the, uh, the newest of the Victorian asylums. So there it is, behind the railings, that grand Victorian water tower, which you can see for miles around. Something incredibly impressive about it, isn't it? And there's the front gates, a locked gated community. Still a gated community. I think there's quite a few uh, Premier League footballers living in there. And of course, we're right on the edge of London here. The other side of that development is Essex. So we're right on the edge of the London borough of Redbridge here. And over there is uh, Epping Forest District Council, or Epping District Council, in the county of Essex. So, I guess this metal post is something to do with the old Victorian asylum. I don't know what. It was in use right into the 1990s as a psychiatric hospital. Let's go back to the, the line in Ian Bourne's film, Lenny's documentary. When you crack up, they send you to Claybury. And you can watch Lenny's documentary by Ian Bourne online, for I think from about 28 days from about now, at the Carol Fletcher Gallery's website. I'll put a link below. Obviously, if you're watching this video in a couple of months' time, the link will be dead, but I'm sure if you contacted them, they might be able to arrange a viewing for you. I just had to exit via Repton Park, come through the kind of little private streets and houses and I have to say there's something really deeply creepy about it because well, I'm bloody glad to be back out into civilised society back out into the public realm rather than that kind of weird plastic world in there very strange <laughs> 